We're now on to the second half of 2023, where titles such as Rennsport, Test Drive Unlimited, Solar Crown and IndyCar have been pushed into next year. There's still a full grid of exciting racing games on the way before the end of this December. Fans of virtual driving have rarely had it this good, so here are eight of the top picks releasing between August and December this year. Let us know in the comments which of these you're most looking forward to. The two previous crew games were a bit mixed. Not without their plus points though, namely online co-op, massive map sizes and boats. But a certain Microsoft franchise has mostly had its own way in the open world driving game subgenre over the past decade. However, we think the Crew Motorfest should be a genuine contender for the crown. The Crew 2 was the entirety, the entirety of the United States. Motorfest on the other hand is the Hawaiian island of Oahu. Instead of touting area size, developers Ubisoft Ivory Tower has aimed to create a more varied and detailed environment. And on first evidence, this was the right call. The kaleidoscope of colour this location provides, mixed with the dynamic weather and time conditions, is a breath of fresh air. Or like the first time you try an airwave chewing gum. <sighs> During our recent test in the beta, we were also struck by how dramatically improved the car handling was and how breathtaking the vistas were when flying through Honolulu at sunset. How the career progression plays out, whether the multiplayer is stable, and if it can truly differentiate itself across the lifespan remains to be seen. For now though, we're cautiously optimistic ahead of the September release, as it seems as if feedback from the prior titles has been heeded. Wait, you didn't play the first overpass? Well, a few did, including us. And we can say the game based around tricky off-road trails is a great idea, but the 2021 title by Zordix Racing had some rough edges, namely a befuddling career progression, a small vehicle list and buzz box engines that sounded more annoying than an angry bee trapped in the office. Imagine our surprise when the publisher Nakon announced a sequel. It has over 35 licensed vehicles and a brand new development team, and it's in the gorgeous Unreal Engine 5. It also means that potential to create a distinctive dirt driving experience is back on the table. So far, the trailers are glossy, but with a lack of pure gameplay footage so far, let's wait and see how this pans out when it launches in two months' time. Still, with the rise of popularity of side-by-side -side adventure driving, the time is right. We're ready to get mud all over our jeans. Not literally, you understand. That was, that was a metaphor. Microsoft is often pigeonholed into only being able to make Forza, Gears and Halo games. The ninth Forza game in 10 years probably isn't going to change that perception. Still, the Forza Motorsport series is an institution that has been away for nearly six years at this point, and in that time it's said to have been at driver training school, working on its racecraft. There will now be fuel usage and multiple tyre compounds, its social skills, further details about its multiplayer options are expected soon, and wait. The racing video game equivalent of liposuction, the new Forza Motorsport will launch with significantly fewer tracks and gameplay modes than the 2017's Motorsport 7. The aim has been to make what's included to be more realistic and longer lasting in its appeal. Sounds promising. If this drives as well as the new tyre models and suspension systems are touted to be, if steering wheels don't feel as inert as they did in FM7 and the car RPG career is compelling, then Turn 10 Studios could be onto a winner. Either way, millions will play it, as it hits most Game Pass subscription tiers from day one with no additional fee. In terms of getting more people to play racing games, Forza Motorsport is potentially the most important release this year. Sometimes you just need to play something that's outrageous. If sim racing in a set of course of competizione is a Michelin-starred restaurant in Florence, then Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged is a Big Mac on a rainy Tuesday in Newark on Trent. Both are at completely different ends of the spectrum, yet somehow equally satisfying. 2021's Hot Wheels Unleashed was a breakthrough success for Milanese development team Milestone, breaking 1 million units sold and becoming its best-selling game ever. It helped that it was more smile-inducing than the first time down a Helter Skelter. You couldn't help but admire its cute representation of die-cast vehicles, the miniaturised orange tracks that wound their way through the real-life locations and frenetic races. Playing it made you feel younger. The volume of DLC was a bit over the top, and that sounds like it will continue for the sequel if the Fast and Furious teaser trailer was anything to go by. This time around, there will be different surfaces to drive on, not just plastic. A bigger roster of models, including quad bikes and motorcycles, six clear performance types, and new abilities such as jumping and sideswiping, plus fresh locations. There's also a detailed vehicle upgrade skill tree now to boot. What we're really hoping for is Hot Wheels 2 imbuing the same childish sense of humour we saw in the first game, especially in split screen. Take that, John. From the frivolity of 164th scale toys to the serious nature of endurance racing, do not call Le Mans Ultimate a game, peeps. This is a simulation platform. 
created by the same studio 3917 behind R Factor 2, the now decade old game, <coughs> sorry, platform is known for a detailed tire model, dynamic time of day and weather, plus a propensity to creak under pressure. Wouldn't it be nice if Le Mans Ultimate, the official title of the 2023 24 Hours of Le Mans and FIA World Endurance Championship, delivers that oh so sweet R Factor driving experience wrapped up in a new user interface with quicker loading times, no package systems and slicker visuals? While gameplay footage hasn't been shown yet, an early version was playable to public visitors of June's French race and the development team has made noises about a fresh online system. Until it's possible to go hands-on with more than just a time trial on one track, our optimism must remain in check. Sports car racing is in another golden era, with the likes of Peugeot, Ferrari, Toyota and Porsche amongst the others duking it out. The series is deserving of a positive virtual representation. Let's hope Le Mans Ultimate delivers just that. On to two wheels next, and following our praise of Milestone's Hot Wheels Smash It earlier, in our opinion, the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S version of Ride 4 represented the company's second best game. As it happens, its two greatest achievements receive sequels within the same year, and Ride 5 releases later this month. The Ride series of games has always been about road-going naked, sports bikes and refined tourers collected through a lengthy single-player campaign. If you want the pinnacle of motorcycle motorsport and a ranked online system, that's what MotoGP is for. Instead, this is about nerding out about the latest BMW M creation, or that 1990 Suzuki. The culture of bikes, if you will. It's lazy trope to characterise Ride 5 as the Gran Turismo of two-wheel gaming. Yet, that's exactly what it is. There are even license tests and fictional sweeping circuits for crying out loud. The inspiration is unabashed and we're here for it. We'll be getting our knee down in just three weeks time. In 1991, Codemasters thought it would be a great idea to turn the miniature toy cars, micro machines into a game. It was local multiplayer perfection as you drove top down through kitchens and across snooker tables. As a 10 year old, it lit up your imagination. Fast forward to 2014 and the company was at it again, only this time without the license. Toy Box Turbos was that mint humbug you found on the back of the sofa. Unexpected sweetness. Now classified as a hidden gem, the pocket-sized racer had Tom Goodchild as a game designer who has also worked on the F1 race stars and some of the MotoGP titles. Now he's a solo indie developer with some freelance contributions under the moniker Ice Beam. Make Way is his new game. It takes those same toy box turbo sensibilities, adds a hint of 2004's multi-map legend Mashed and brings them into the current era. Each race is broken down into rounds and before they begin, players must pick a track piece. You then add it to the layout and begin. Beating your rivals to the finish of each earns you points and the track builds up as you go along. Take it from us as we've been hands-on. This is about as much fun as you can have with socks on and the traction team cannot wait to face off against each other. The eighth game in this list and well, we don't know anything about it. The curious case of Electronic Arts and Codemasters Missing World Rally Championship game. What we do know is that there's a five-year license deal in place that's meant to kick in this year. We also think the gaming and simulation industry needs a new rallying title more than a marathon runner needs water. With a bit of luck, something is still on track to release later this year. Please? Well, there we go. Eight games releasing this year that we're especially looking forward to. Not forgetting, of course, the likes of iRacing's XO Cross and early access for Stampede, Racing Royale and potentially Rec Nation. We can't wait to see the final versions of these titles and share our experiences with you over the next six months. If you'd like to watch hands-on previews, reviews and guides for all of these titles in this video, make sure you're subscribed to the Traction YouTube channel. Thanks for your support and as always, keep it pinned. <laughs>